Hey guys, Glenn here. Today we're testing out the Rose Pro 3D printer by Beganova. Is it worth a buy? I'm going to unbox it for you, show you exactly what comes in it, 3D print a bunch of stuff with it, so you know if you're going to want it or not. Let's get into it. Before I open up, let's go to the website and see what they claim. All right, here we are at Beganova.com. This printer is extremely cheap for what you get, um, especially how heavy it is. So uh, normally $5.99, it's on sale right now for $3.99. So I don't know how long that sale is going to go on for. You know, that's uh, US. Not a bad price if it's good printer, right? Now this one's for no enclosure. If you want the enclosure, it's going to be $4.59. This is the model that I'm testing at 459. The shipping was fast uh, when I got it. They asked me if I wanted to test this and it was it, it was at my house in a couple days. So I'm assuming it's the same shipping because it came from the warehouse, it seemed like. What you get? You get a 3D printer with everything included that you need. Magnetic print plate uh, with removable print sheet, that's true. PLA, uh, you get a free 1,000 or one kilogram of PLA. Uh, 3.5 inch touch screen, which is a nice touch screen. It, it's very responsive and it's big enough to see and everything. Um, easy and free software. Yes, it was easy and free. Um, you're gonna see all that soon. And then you can engage in the Beganova global community. So, sure. Now, it's got a curved acrylic enclosure, unique design, module print head, uh, fully enclosed print head, dual print fans, it's got five by five auto leveling, Large print area. It is pretty large, uh, 250 by 220 by 240. Um, you know, it's it's decent. And then uh, the print head supports up to 260 degrees, and the hotbed it goes up to 100 degrees Celsius, of course. Um, they should probably say that here, but I mean, I guess it's implied. Um, you can print a variety of materials, including PLA, TPU, PETG, ABS, PA, whereas PTG, ABS, and PA need to use a curved acrylic enclosure. Let's go automatic pause. It has a filament runout sensor, which is good. Every printer should have that. Automatic save. Um, automatic power off. So it does power off. I've actually tested it. Um, you're not going to see this, but it does do that. And then um, it's got ambient light uh, LEDs, which is cool. Up to a 0 0.02 millimeter layer re resolution, which is super fine theater lighting mode so there are a couple of different uh, lights that you could do on here which is cool it comes with its own slicer if you don't want to use this slicer you could just use Prusa slicer uh, which if you guys want me to make a video about that if I get enough comments down below I'll I'll do that this is all the stuff you get in it which you'll see in the unboxing in a second now let's get into the unboxing here she is in all her glory let's open her up see what's inside Really heavy. Really heavy. Oh. We got a toolbox. And got a three D printer add on. I don't know what that is yet. It's filling it. Let's put it together and see how she works. Okay, so I got her up on our 3D printer fixer desk slash review desk. Um, it's it's so heavy that you borderline need two people to to pick it up. Like it is really heavy. Like this is like really thick steel. So impressive so far. Um, but I mean, obviously, we want to see how easy it is to set up and how it prints, you know? So um, I love the idea that it's already an enclosure. So it's, only, so it's gonna have the front on here. Looks like it's gonna have full access to, to repair if you need to repair something or adjust something. Um, it, it, it's not like tight. So I love the I, I love the design of the enclosure so far um, as well as the top here. Um, really neat. So let's put it together. Let's see what's in the toolbox. This is filament, this is tool box. Let's see, oh, I'll drop that. OK, 
Okay. This is the manual. All right, we'll go to that later. We have a fan, which I have to install somewhere, I would assume, unless it's an extra fan. Leveling paper. And we got a 3D printer leveling test card. And obviously you got the power cord, and then this is a, uh, I guess you would call it a printer cord, is what you usually hook a printer up to. Like a, an actual printer. Um, a data cable. And whatever this thing is, we're gonna figure this one out. And then whatever this thing is. I'm intrigued. Oh, and comes the USB. Micro, micro SD USB 2.0. So the micro SD actually is in here. Oh, oh, there's more to it. There's more to it. So there's also, lift this up, and you got some snippers. And then, that's it. Okay, hold on guys. Check out this beautiful filament they sent me. This looks so cool um just the filament alone is getting me excited so so um this is this is uh strong hero 3d pla galaxy glitter blue um so i'm gonna print with this because i'm gonna try it out it's it's i just i, I can't not do a cool color on this machine so we're gonna we're gonna print through this it goes in the back here okay one thing i don't really like about the printer is i mean maybe i'll get used to it but it's like I, I I gotta reach around to to get this on the back of the printer, which you know with my Prusas, for instance, so you got like two on the top, like you know one here, one here, or you can put them on the side or whatever. Uh, maybe I could switch this up and change it uh, if I really wanted to, but um, might be an annoyance to you, might not be, but we're gonna print and see how it works. Now once that's on, you're gonna feed it through. Um, I'm assuming this is a filament sensor, and then. Um, I mean, it has to be a filament sensor, and then it just goes through the tube and out there. Okay, so the bed is textured. It seems like every 3D printer is going this route, which I love. Um, it, it hides a lot of imperfections. Um, the only problem is some have a problem with adhesion, and we'll see if this does or not. Um, but uh, one thing that I noticed that I don't like is... Like, like, for instance, on a Prusa Mark III, there's, um, you know, things to catch back here or some kind of, I mean, most printers have some kind of um, something to catch this and, and, and put this on easily. It's not the biggest deal, but it, but it doesn't line up. Like, you got to line it up, you know? Kind of strange. Um, I think it would have been easy to just like add two little markers or two notches or something back here to to make it line up easy Kind of like Prusa does they just put like two bolts there, <laughs> you know, it's kind of ghetto, but it works um, so Little note now. Let's start the print oh, Yeah Oops it, it was satisfying, but it wasn't as satisfying as I really thought, because this is... <laughs> okay, so this is the touch screen. Choose file. Oh, you know what? I'm going to put the SD card in. It's right on the side here, is where you plug this in. Or... Um, they give you the cable, so you could plug plug it in here, probably directly to your computer or whatever, maybe a network. Um, so those are your two options. This might be just for an SD card or something. So I'm heating it up to put the filament in. And one thing, cool thing I just noticed is it's got LED strips on already. Pre-install, baby. Um, and and the front too. Look at that. Love it. Alrighty, so we got the software downloaded and installed. This is my first time using it, so I'm just looking it over here. So we'll just keep everything normal, I guess. You do infill density, five to ten, like thin, normal, strong. 
I wish you can just put the number in here. It seems like it's more toned to... This is probably like um, easy mode or something. Oh, customize. Okay. So yeah, so you, you can do your own profile. Um, you can change it to, you know, 99, 100%, whatever. We'll just keep their stock settings and see how it prints. All right, so we got the Cali Dragon here. Um, it's not going to require any supports or anything like that. You guys have seen this. I've, I've printed a lot of these to compare printers versus each other and filament. Um, so we're going to slice it. Slices fast. I'm going to save the file. All right, so I started the Kelly Dragon here. Um, and then I forgot about it, and I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute. Is it printing? Because I can't hear this thing. Like, standing right here, it's almost silent, and once in a while I hear a little something. But man, this thing is quiet. So, so if this isn't like your bedroom, uh, like if someone, like you're a college student, you need to just have something close um, to your to your bed or in your room or something. Like, it's it's super super duper quiet. This this won't wake you up. Which uh, most 3D printers, like 90% of them, they're, they're they're a lot louder than this. So uh, that's definitely something to note for sure. So can't wait to see how this comes out. Now with the prints all done, I'm super excited to show you how they came out. So I ended up printing a bunch of these. Um, there is two Benchies in two different colors. I wanted to print with this color because it was so cool. Um, and then four dragons. Now, I have two fine dragons and I have two coarse dragons. This was their fine setting, this was their rough setting or coarse setting, um, which is true. It's coarse and it's fine. The fine is extremely fine, in fact. Um, the problem here is, um, I'll show you up close each one. This is the coarse. There's no stringing whatsoever. Um, but you're going to get coarse with coarse, so just good for parts or whatever. Um, now this is the fine. There's a little bit of stringing. Um, it's different. Like most 3D printers that I print this with, the stringing up top is how we how we could tell between these horns or antlers. Um, it's more globby than stringy, which is much different from other 3D printers. There's actually like a, a lot of string, so it's probably a setting issue that I would have to, um, you know, probably it's probably retraction settings or something. But um, you know, still pretty pretty good nonetheless. This was the fine. Now this was a semi course This was only a 0 0.2 mil millimeters. Might be hard to tell. Might, tell. might be hard to see because it's um, you know pretty dark. But um, same thing. The globbing. Um, I printed this first, and I was wondering, you know, what that was. But it, this inland filament did the same exact thing, um, just less. Um, than this one did so it's got to be the printers issue, uh, but still nonetheless not a bad printer You just got to clean it up uh, with some file. All right now super fine uh, a lot of globbing uh, You know, I guess we can call it stringing globbing whatever it is um, However, you know the, the rest of the print is extremely fine um, You know, I'll let you see the whole entire thing around it printed very well so I cannot complain about that. Besides for this globbing up here, I'd have to change some settings around uh, to probably get rid of that, but I imagine I would be able to. Um, this is a Benchy. Everyone wants to, everyone wants to see a Benchy. And that's the Benchy. Now this Benchy, um, I don't know why, but on the side here you can see um, some either clogging or under extrusion, which is not normal. Um, this side isn't too bad. Right here, I could see that there was a clog or something going on. Uh, so, I don't know what that was, but nonetheless, I have to point it out. But, you can see the Benchy. Came out pretty good. Size 4, you know. Um, and it was a fast, this is a fast Benchy, so maybe just too fast for the machine. But overall, I'm pretty happy with uh, the weight prints. It's not too shabby, especially for the price point. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope I made an easy decision for you if you wanted this 3D printer or not. 
please like and subscribe if you like this kind of content and you want to see more. If you want to purchase this specific unit, I'll leave a link down below. You guys have a great day.